Florida contains three major environmental systems, freshwater, uplands, and coastal. Today we're going to look at the coastal system and provide examples from recent outings to coastal habitats conducted by the Northeast Florida chapter of the Sierra Club. Coastal areas are extremely diverse ecosystems. The coastal system is itself comprised of three components, marine, coastal uplands, and estuarine. The major factors that influence characteristics of coastal systems are tides, topography, soil, fresh water, climate, weather, and other aspects such as salt spray, non-native plants, and human activities. The marine component is all of the area covered by ocean water. The deep ocean zone is the area farthest offshore. As it approaches land, the ocean floor rises to meet the continental landmass, known as the continental rise. Then comes the continental slope, which finally levels off in the continental shelf, which ultimately becomes the coastline when the landmass is higher than the water level. 95% of all marine life lives in the 2% of the ocean comprised of coastal waters on the continental shelf. The marine component is characterized by high energy. Tides are powerful and active forces on the water and land environments in the marine system. Animals and plants that adapt to this area need to be able to survive and thrive in this high energy environment. Other habitat characteristics are hard and soft substrates. Soft substrates are the sandy beaches we know and love in Florida. However, hard substrates are also important Florida habitats. For example, coral reefs in South Florida, which provide so much enjoyment for snorkelers. Natural systems are always changing. With environmental changes, there are winners and losers. For example, erosion that leaves rocky outcrops may be bad for nesting shorebirds, but great for marine invertebrates. An important concept is the food web. Physical and biological components are important here. Physical characteristics support certain species and not others. Plants are capable of maintaining themselves completely from physical, non-living aspects of the environment. These life forms are known as producers. First level or primary consumers subsist by eating these plants. Higher level or secondary consumers live off the primary consumers, consuming animal in addition to plant life. Any change to the composition of the food web affects all life within the habitat. Certain changes can completely alter or even destroy a habitat. Tides are an important aspect of marine ecology. Tides change the characteristic of the land twice a day. The intertidal region is either covered with water at high tide or exposed during low tide. Exposed shoreline often takes the form of mud flats, supporting filter feeding organisms such as oysters. Also, deposit feeders such as clams ingest sediment and digest bacteria and organic matter. Species such as snails and crustaceans consume dead plant material and other organic matter. Mobile aquatic organisms like stingrays, fish, and blue crabs hunt the tidal flats at high tide. Shorebirds, wading birds, raccoons, and other terrestrial species hunt the flats at low tide. The most abundant plants are algae. Sierra Club has conducted outings on the beach along the marine habitat at Big Talbot Island and at Little Talbot Island. As you move up away from the shoreline, you enter the next area of the coastal system, the coastal uplands. These uplands begin with the primary dune system, where hardy pioneer plant species like grasses, vines, and hardy shrubs begin to attain a toehold in the nutrient-poor sandy soil of the dunes. These plants are adapted in other ways to this environment by being salt tolerant, drought tolerant, and resilient in high winds. 
Examples of common grasses on Florida dunes are sea oats. Examples of vines found on dunes are beach morning glory and railroad vine. The primary dunes are important nesting areas for coastal birds such as black skimmers and royal terns and for sea turtles. A key concept in environmental science is the idea of succession. Succession is a term that describes the long-term progression of biological communities that occurs in a given area. Succession can be further described in terms of its stages, primary, secondary, intermediate, and climax. Succession can be altered by disturbances both natural and man-made. In terms of the coastal uplands, Succession occurs by the population of the dune subsystem by pioneer plants, such as sea oats and railroad vine. Leaves and dead plants from this pioneer population build up a layer of richer soil on the dune that can support more advanced plants. This accretion of soil, plus the action of wind off the water, also builds up the elevation of the terrain, so it is slightly higher above the level of the ocean. The primary phase of succession in the coastal uplands is represented by the fore dune. The second and intermediate phases are represented by the transitional zone. Plants that grow in this transitional zone are saw palmetto, Spanish bayonet, Florida rosemary, and prickly pear cactus. Animal inhabitants of this zone include gopher tortoises, coast dunes crown snake, beach mice, tiger beetle, velvet ant, and the great southern white butterfly. The prickly pear cactus bears a red fruit that is eaten by gopher tortoises. Although species inhabiting the dunes are well adapted to natural disturbances such as salt spray, wind, and tidal flooding, these systems are extremely fragile when it comes to human disturbances. In Florida, it is illegal to walk on most dunes. Some exceptions are the Santa Rosa Beach in Pensacola, the Little Talbot Island Nature Trail, and the Anastasia Island Nature Trail. The Sierra Club of Northeast Florida has led hikes on Little Talbot, which is a particularly illustrative trail since it encompasses the marine and upland components of the coastal system and is a short drive from the estuarine component. The climax phase of succession in the coastal system is the maritime forest. As the soil becomes enriched by the detritus of the plant life in the intermediate phase, and the elevation and shelter of the plants closer to the ocean protects the area from the wind and salt spray, larger plants can grow. In different parts of Florida, different species dominate maritime forests. In northeast Florida, the maritime forest is characterized by the live oak hammock. Live oaks dominate these hammocks. Every North Floridian knows these trees for their tall spreading canopies draped with Spanish moss. These trees grow to 60 to 80 feet tall with a 100 foot spread and live hundreds of years. Also present is the cabbage palm or sable palmetto, which is our state tree. Forming the understory are a variety of other tree species, such as Yapan holly. Leaves of this holly tree were used in ceremonial rituals by native people and was brewed as a tea substitute by European settlers. Drinking excess amounts can cause vomiting, so be careful how you use it. The forest floor is characterized by saw palmetto. When sable palmetto are young, they look similar to saw palmetto. You can tell the difference by the shape of the stem when it meets the leaves. The saw palmetto has a flat square end, whereas the sable palmetto terminates in a sharp spear-like shape. The Sierra Club has conducted outings in the maritime forest with hikes in the Fort Clinch State Park. In many Florida coastal environments, the maritime forest created an elevated topography which, when flooded on its backside, became an island between the ocean and the mainland. These are known as barrier islands and are a common phenomenon throughout the Florida coastline. 
Barrier islands help shield habitats on the mainland from the high energy of the ocean. The water between the barrier island and the mainland is referred to as the estuarine component of the coastal system. The estuarine component contains salt marsh and lagoons and intracoastal rivers. An estuary is a body of water that is brackish, containing a mix of fresh and salt water. The ocean contains 35 parts per thousand salt. Brackish water in the estuary is between 0.5 and 30 parts per thousand. Estuaries are subject to tidal variations in water levels, but the wave and wind action is less than the marine and the intertidal regions due to the shelter of the maritime forest. Estuaries are the nursery of the sea, with many marine species migrating to the estuaries to lay their eggs, and many juvenile and larval stages of development take place within the estuary, with the individuals migrating to the open ocean as an adult. In fact, 70% of Florida's game fish and shellfish began life in estuaries. These smaller larval and juvenile forms of species become important foodstuffs for the larger species that inhabit the estuarine environments, such as wading birds. The salt marsh is dominated in northeast Florida by smooth cordgrass, scientific name Spartina alterniflora, and a variety of other marsh grasses. Spartina is found in areas of high salinity and provides the foundation for the salt marsh by its detritus as a food source for other species and by its resistance to erosion through its extensive root systems. South of Daytona, mangroves are predominant in salt marshes and tidal swamps instead of grasses. The Sierra Club of Northeast Florida has conducted outings in the estuarine and habitats with hikes in Fort Clinch State Park and Little Talbot Island. Also, Guano Tolomato, Stokes Landing, and Dutton Island. Coastal systems are very important to Florida. Of 67 counties, 35 are coastal, and they support 77% of our population. Beach tourism generates $15 billion per year. Our marine fishery is worth $10 billion per year. Barrier islands protect the mainland from direct effects of hurricanes and tidal surges, and estuaries filter pollutants and buffer winds and tides. With the rising sea levels, these services become even more important. Coastal systems are threatened by human activity. The most critical threats are habitat loss, chemical pollution, and bacterial pollution, with habitat loss being the greatest. The barrier islands and maritime forests in particular have already been extensively developed and have been one of the most desirable areas to live. Human habitation brings roads, air and water pollutants, change in nutrient levels due to human waste, and introduction of non-native species. If, by overdevelopment, we destroy these habitats, we lose the vital biological services that these systems provide. Storm protection, water purification, food sources, and recreation. What can we do to protect these areas? First of all, vote and advocate to conserve our current wild, undeveloped coastal areas. Full annual funding of the Florida Forever Constitutional Amendment is one important example. It is so much easier and less costly to conserve than to restore. Minimize chemicals used for lawn, home, and car care. Keep your dogs on a leash at the beach and away from shorebirds that use our beaches as important rest stops in their annual migrations and for nesting. Minimize the use of plastics which enter the ocean and get into the digestive systems of marine animals and are poisonous. If you use single-use plastics, try to recycle and certainly do not litter beaches and coastal habitats. Plastic bags look like jellyfish, a major food source for some large fish. 
Recycle your plastic monofilament fishing line. If left in the ocean, larger fish, marine a- mammals, and birds get caught in it and are strangled and restrained and die. Do not use balloons in coastal areas. They float away and eventually descend into the ocean and are swallowed by fish who can't digest them. Use native plants in your landscaping and avoid exotics. And finally, reduce your energy usage from sources that emit carbon into the atmosphere causing climate change. Slowing the rate and ultimately preventing additional warming of the atmosphere will prevent further destructive sea level rise and extinctions of land and water species that we humans depend on for life. I hope you've enjoyed our virtual exploration of Florida's coastal system and that we will see you in the future on a Northeast Florida Sierra Club outing to one of these beautiful habitats.